Undecided voters in Arizona could be a deciding factor in next month's election. But just who are these voters who say that they still haven't decided on who they plan to vote on or major races and issues? Joining us now is Paul Benz, Vice President of Research and Strategy at the consulting firm High Ground. Paul, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, is there such a thing right now in this day and age of divided everything of an undecided voter? Oh, sure. I mean, there's still some folks that haven't made up their mind or more accurate is they probably had someone in mind. But with the negativity of the cycle and the attacks that we see on a very regular basis, what we generally see is someone goes from picking someone to not sure if they really want to choose them. And that's sort of the secret that most folks don't talk about is negative ads. They don't bring your number up. They don't nat naturally assume that if you attack your opponent, you get that voter. What it does is just casts doubt in their mind. Then you have to give them a reason to vote for you, not simply against your opponent. Right. And that, which is why negative advertising works so well. Not so much for you, but against the other guy. Certainly. It has a suppressive effect. I think one of the things that we're seeing, particularly among Republicans, is a lot of negativity, a lot of attacking opponents uh, to cast doubt. I think that doesn't necessarily help with voter turnout. I think it's more of a suppressive in nature. But in general, when turnout is down, Republicans do better in the state of Arizona. So I, that might be part of the strategy. Uh, but, but when someone says they're undecided about uh, the presidential race, are they really undecided as to Donald Trump over here and Kamala Harris? I mean, goodness gracious, there's not much. It's a, it's a vast chasm in between there. Well, absolutely. I think one of the the challenges, though, is this is an unprecedented election. Seems to change every few days. You had Biden drop out and then Harris replace him. Harris is still a little bit of an unknown. I think people would like to know a little bit more about her. We have two new vice presidential candidates that are in there that create a little bit of uncertainty as well. As folks are trying to read up and learn about these candidates, they're also being inundated with the negatives about those candidates. And I think that's what creates some uncertainty. The debate last night, vice presidential debate, did that, do you think that's any swings there, left, right? anything? I don't think so. I think Vance did much better than uh, Trump did in the debate. I think some will say that Vance likely won that debate, but it was pretty close. I think the tone and tenor of that debate was significantly better than the presidential debate. It goes to more of an earlier time where folks were a little bit more cordial, absolutely were willing to agree with one another on some items. And I think that's what voters like to see. I think voters would like to see some more positivity or aspirational approaches to these elections. It's something we don't don't see very often. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so you got your undecided voters who can't figure out who they're going to vote for, but then as you kind of referred to here, you got the other undecided voters who aren't sure they're even going, they're undecided on voting. I mean, these are people, you, you, how do you get them off the couch? What do you do? Well, so the low efficacy voters are the voters who don't have that history of voting. They tend to show up when the president is at the top of the ticket. That's when they sort of pay attention to the election. But with this election like this being as cloudy and negative as it is, what we may actually see is people show up for other reasons, for the abortion initiative, for example, or for the immigration initiative, or to vote for one of their local races that they care a lot about. I think we'll see some folks show up for that. And the question is, will they actually transfer translate and vote for the presidential election as well. Um, independent and unaffiliated voters are going to be the key to this upcoming election because one of the things that characterizes them is they choose not to be of a party, so they're not loyal to one party or the other. So they actually can pick and choose. So, you know, you look at the presidential election, there could be a voter that votes for Trump and then goes and votes for Gallego. I mean, that will certainly happen. There'll be a voter that votes for the abortion initiative and for the immigration initiative. The, the independents in particular are known to sort of shop a la carte when yes. it comes to votes. Yes, but, but as far as, again, is it easier to get the persuadable voters to get on your side? They're undecided, but they're persuadable, as opposed to the, I don't even know if I'm going to vote guys on the couch on your side. Who's, who's easiest to get moving in the right, in what you consider, the candidate considers, a right direction. Well, so the persuadable voters that you're talking about, the high efficacy persuadables, is very small. It's a small segment. You definitely want to talk to them. But then I would expect that the ground games are going after sort of lower efficacy voters, folks that maybe don't participate in every election and trying to get them to show up. The challenge is 
Traditionally, that's done through early voting. If you can get someone to vote early, you have them banked, and then you can move on to other people that maybe don't vote as often, and you can spend some time with them. But they've cast doubts, particularly Republicans, about early voting. So they're going to have to spend time with these Election Day voters and make sure that they show up to vote and bank those folks, and then go to the undecideds or those lower turnout voters. That's where Democrats will have a bit of an advantage, yes. because they've spent time getting more Democrats to vote early, which allows them to move on to some of those undecided folks that may not show and up. And now I was going to ask, which party seems to have an advantage on either side? And you're saying in terms of timing, maybe Democrats? For decades, it was Republicans. Republicans had pen had created early voting, had perfected it, and did it incredibly well. Yes. Uh, following 2016 or following 2020, they really cast doubts on that. And we see that now, going back, we're really looking at a spot where Democrats have caught up on early voting. And in fact, I think their ground game in Arizona is probably a little bit better. And that's a part partly because of Republicans shooting themselves in the foot, I would imagine. Uh, that's correct. And there's about 10 to 15 percent of Republicans that are crossover voters choosing Democrats because they're not MAGA Republicans. When you have candidates like Kerry Lake telling McCain voters to get out, it has an effect. There's a portion of their own base that's not voting for them. And that's why it's really competitive right now between the candidates is because Democrats are getting a little bit of crossover from Republicans. And so it comes down to independent voters and where they are. As far as polling is concerned, last question here. What do we watch for in terms of these undecided votes? Uh, if it increases, what does that say? If it decreases, what does that say? I think if it increases, what you should look at is the definitely for any candidate, definitely Trump or definitely Harris, because if the increase in undecideds likely means that turnout will come down a little bit, because some portion of those undecideds are just not going to show up. If it's just so negative, they won't show up. And so then really what you have to look at is the rest of that poll. What are the numbers, you know, to, against one another. What do they look like? Because that will likely determine the outcome. All right. Good information. Paul Bentz, High Ground. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.